He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He preached the gospel. And he spent time with the Father. And so we're going to go through some of these. If you guys want to take notes so you have them in the future, so you really want to study, let's go through it. So the first thing Jesus did was heal the sick. And the reference that I chose was Matthew 8. Matthew 8, 1 to 4 says, After he came down from teaching on the hillside, massive crowds began following him. Suddenly a leper walked to Jesus and threw himself down before him in worship and said, Lord, you have the power to heal me if you really want to. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leper and said, of course I want to heal you. Be healed. You see how simple that was? He didn't have to make a show. He literally said, be healed in Jesus' name. Well, he didn't say after Jesus' name because he was Jesus, but you know what I mean. (laughs) And instantly all the signs of leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, do not speak to anyone, but go at once and find a priest and show him what has happened to you. Make sure that the offering that Moses commanded had to cert- so he can certify your healing. So, does that make sense? He healed the sick. Two, the second thing he did was he cast out demons. And the scripture references Matthew 10, 8. You must continually bring healing to lepers like he did before. And to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people. And raise the dead back to life. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you can raise dead people back to life? Okay, okay. I like it. I like the confidence. And if you have Jesus inside of you, then you can. Amen. So we can do it now. So this is, this is the best part of the scripture. It says, freely you have received the power of the kingdom. So freely release it to others. If you've been saved and you've been transformed and it was a gift to you, right? Like God changed your heart. He changed your perspective. You know, the song says, he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. That's what he did to me. That's what he did to me. I don't know if he did it for you. I hope that he did it for you. So if it's freely given to you, then why wouldn't you share it to someone else? That's why it's called the good news, because the good news is that he did it for me and he could do it for you, right? So simple. It's so simple. The third thing that he did was preach the gospel. And so if you really want to study the kingdom of God, read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's the Sermon on the Mount. It's where Jesus starts talking to his disciples and the many people on the mountain and was saying, this is what the kingdom of God is. This is what God, like God is about. He's saying, you know, you think it's this, but I'm flipping it upside down. You think it's religion, but actually it's the Holy Spirit. You think it's this, but it's not. And I would really say, that's what we studied before we went out to uh, minister that year. For f- three months, we studied Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Every week, we like went line by line and dissected. What does this mean? The, these types of people are like the meek shall inherit the earth. That's where it talks about all that kind of stuff. And it really flips your whole idea because the, the world teaches us, oh, climb up this ladder, or climb up this mountain, and you'll get success and you'll gain so much. But really, Jesus humbled himself. Have you ever, un- do you know the, the concept of servant leadership? Put your hand up. No, servant leadership. Okay, leadership usually is a pyramid like this. And you go up and, you, you know, like if you work for a company, there's, you know, the workers and then the managers and then the regional managers and then the whatever and then the CEOs up top. And some people, we work so hard to attain these things and climb up this ladder, not realizing that Jesus f- took the pyramid, flipped it upside down, came down from his throne in heaven on earth, in a man, as a man, and said, I'm actually going to flip this whole thing upside down. I know I'm the king of kings. Do you know why he says that? You know, <laughs> don't get me started. Do you know why the Bible says that, like, he's the king of kings? Do you know why? You want to take a guess? Because he's the king. If we are considered kings, small letter kings, you are a king too doesn't matter. Don't, you're a girl too. It doesn't matter. You're still in royalty. So he's the king of kings. So 
Pastor Kerry has been talking about your authority and your identity, once you realize, this, I say this all the time, once you understand your identity, you will operate in your authority. I love it. I always keep it in my back pocket. Once you understand your identity, what is your identity? What does it mean? That you're a son of God. That you're a daughter of God. Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means? He didn't just save you and rescued you. Most of the world knows him as Savior, but they don't know him as Lord. Do you know what it means to be a Lord? A Lord is a master of your life. And not in a bad way. Oh, my gosh. It's not a bad thing. He wants to help you. He, want, he, want, he says, you're no longer my servant. I've called you my child. Like you're a son. God sees you and looks at you and says, that's my son. That's my daughter. I see you when I look in your reflection. Like have you asked God, I, I, I said it with, to Pastor Kerry the other day. Have you ever asked God, hey, God, like what do you think about me? You should. <laughs> It's so much fun. <laughs> Sit, ask him, write in your journal, God, what do you think about me? And wait. And the first things that come to your head, write them down. One time, the first thing he told me, is like, you're a boss lady. I was like, thanks, God. You're so nice to me. <laughs> he tells you your identity. He doesn't just call you your, his daughter or his son. We have to continue to look to him. And sometimes we treat God like he's this faraway God, but he's not. That's who changed your heart from the inside. So he's inside of you. So simple to access. We make God like, oh, we got to go through this gate. And then we got to go through the Ark of the Covenant. And then we got, no, Jesus tore the veil. Like, he tore the veil so we can have access to him. Okay, okay. All right, let's go back <laughs> to my Okay, so if you want to know about the kingdom of God, read these three chapters. Yes, identity, authority, amen. Spend time with the Father. Luke 5, 16 says, but Jesus often slipped away from them and went in the wilderness to pray. Jesus was notorious for leaving his friends and be like, I'm sorry, I need to go talk to my dad. Like, how many times do we do that? Do you ever feel that? Like, unction? No? You never feel that? Like, when you're with your family and God's like, the whole, you just feel the Holy Spirit like, just come just come. I just want to talk to you. I just want to tell you about you. You're like, you're so awesome. Like, that intimacy with God is so precious. That friendship with the Holy Spirit is so precious. It's like I live for it. It's so, like, why would I want attention from anyone else when he, the God of the universe has your attention? It's so cool. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, when you understand your identity, it took me, okay, let me backtrack a little bit so you make it real. Because I know, what's your name? What's your name? O'Brien? Okay. I, I saw your expression and you were just like, no, I don't, I don't get that. I don't, it's okay. You know what? It took me nine years of my salvation to see myself as a daughter. Nine. And I begged for five. Begged? God? I, you know what I would tell him? I'd be like, God... I just want to know what it's like. Teach me to be a daughter. And you know what he said to me? <laughs> be a daughter. You are a daughter. What do you mean be a daughter? Like, Marley, you can't be any more a daughter. You can't ask your mom, mom, teach me how to be more a daughter. You are a daughter. Like, it's just your, your, your identity is, in, is, a, is inside of you. He's in, she's inside of you. Your dad's, I, it's inside of you. So th that's the same thing with God, except we, we have lived, we were born in this fallen world. So we start to believe the constructs and the systems of the way this world has, has taught us to believe that we literally have to go back and unlearn these things. Like a little story, when, when I was young, my parents always used to tell me, don't ask for anything. Don't, if we go to your aunt's house, don't ask for food. Don't ask people for nothing. It's going to look like you're begging. So when I got saved at 18, I, had, I, I looked in the Bible and it said, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door is going to be open to you. So I had to be like, God, like, my parents told me not to ask, but like you tell me to ask, so I'm going to ask. Because you know what the, the worst case scenario is? Someone says no. 
that's the worst case scenario. So once you get that out of your head, if you can accept the no, then it's like, okay, I'm going to ask. Hey, can I come over to your house? I know we've never met. And, um, actually, that's a real story. <laughs> I was basing it off of when I went to Florida. So I had a, when I took that one, one week, one week, one, one, one way trip, when I took that one week trip, I had a place to stay for two weeks. And then I had another two and a half weeks that I didn't have a place to stay. So I was like, okay, God, you better open a door because I don't know that many people in Florida. So I had connected with this lady on Instagram and I had invited her to this event. She came, I didn't know, we, not, we just stopped talking. So she was posting some stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, you were there, so was I. So we get connected. She's like, hey, I'm having a woman's Bible study, like a Bible study weekend at my house. I'm like, who does that? I'm like, the only times I hear that is like some yoga retreats, but I don't know. I'm not, not mixing myself in, in, in some weird stuff. So I'm like, tell me, like, what type of event this is. So she tells me it's a woman's Bible study. She sends me the links. I'm like, cool. So I said to her, I'm like, hey, I know this is weird. I know we haven't met yet. Um, but can I stay at your house for the next two and a half weeks before I go to Brazil? And she's like, ah, uh, bring your stuff and we'll see. Just stay for the weekend. Da, 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 da. Long story short, it was the most beautiful mansion I'd ever stayed in in my life. Um, the person that she's with, her man, is an NBA player. So I stayed in an NBA player's house that I wouldn't have ever, like I had no connection to it. I didn't know the person. It was because, and she, the way that she found me was on Instagram through a prophetess who has a hundred and something thousand followers. How'd you find me from Toronto? I don't get it. Like, God will literally open the doors for you. I'm not saying this to boast or brag. I'm saying it that you can literally do the same thing. I remember literally on the second or thir the third day that I woke up in this house and I'm walking around, literally, it looked like it was pulled out of my Pinterest board. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is unreal. And God, God, the sun is shining, these big windows, white house, and God goes, Josie, I'm going to take you places that your parents could have never taken you. I'm going to do for you things that your parents could have never done for you. At this point, my eyes start to water up, and the only sentence that I can think of next would have been, Josie, like, you're my daughter. Like, my parents could have never. My parents, I'm the only one that's saved in my family, which is difficult. Still. Every day. Difficult. But I know that no matter how many times my, my father or my mother fall short that the God of the universe is my dad. I really know that, and I believe it, and I really want you to believe that. So let's, let's get back to this. So what is, my, what is my responsibility? You're asking me, okay, Josie, I see, like, God is moving in your life. That's great, but, like, well, how about me? So what is your responsibility? The, the scripture in John 14, 12 says, I tell you this timeless truth. The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do, even greater miracles than these, because I go to be with my father. I mean, I can, you can interpret it as Josie saying this to you, right? I just finished saying that. I tell you this truth, that you follow me in faith, believing in God, you can do the same things that I did. But this was Jesus speaking. These are red letters. And he said, I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to go be with, back with my dad, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit so you can do greater than these things. Like sometimes I don't think we truly understand when, what he says. If Jesus healed the sick, if Jesus, like we get confused, we get lost in the, in, in the, in the fullness of the Bible. And we forget like G the whole Bible is revolving around Jesus. The whole Bible. Before he came, the, the, you know, in Genesis, God made a plan, and then Jesus came, and then now he's here, and then he left, and he left G the Holy Spirit for us so that we can walk around with the power, the same power and authority that he had. It's so simple. It's so simple. 
Don't get lost in the complexities. Yes, there's theology and you can go to Bible school and you can learn the ins and outs of the Bible. But don't get lost and don't forget the simplicity of the gospel. It's so simple. God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so Josie, how do I do this? You guys are going out. First, I wanted to tell you what, what Jesus did. So let, let's take it like super practical. Let's take some notes if you guys are going out next week because I really want this to be super practical for you. How do I do this too? Can we switch the slides, please? To step one. So step one. <clears throat> Before you guys go out, let's, let's add. Oh, I just turned it off. <laughs> so before we go out, I'm sure... Pastor Kerry is going to walk you through this. But one of the things we used to do before we went out to minister was we spent time together in prayer. And we allowed God to speak to us. Lord, show me a name. God, give me a t-shirt color. Give me a something. Lord, reveal to us something about a person that's on the street. And you just take notes. It could be random. It could be random words. It could be ostrich. It could be whatever. Sometimes you see them. Sometimes you don't. But if you make a list, at least you have some type of understanding or you, you feel led by God. And then when you meet them on the streets, you'll be like, whoa, God, like you actually spoke to me? That's super cool. So spend some time in prayer. But how to actually practically approach. So step one is the greeting. Start with a compliment or question. So if I came up to you, I didn't know you, I don't know your name. I said, hey, oh my gosh, I love your shoes. I really actually do because I love neutrals. Where did you get your shoes? You got it from a friend? That's so amazing. That's such a nice friend. Wow. I, so do you know where I can get them? Like what are they called? Oh, some Nike, Nike shoes. Oh, wow, that, that's so amazing. Great. Let's stop there. Pause. That's the first way that you, it's e the easiest way to start a conversation is to compliment someone. And be genuine. I mean, don't make it up. Like, be genuine. Choose, choose something that you actually like. I like your, your red sweater. It's so cool. It matches your kicks. That's super dope. Like, be genuine. Like, you would want to be, like, yeah, compliments are fun. So a compliment or question. These are some examples. Wow, I like your earrings. Yo, your kicks are dope. Do you shop here often? Hey, how's your day going? Sometimes the simplest thing. How's your day going? Maybe it's not going great and they're going to open up to you. Right? Okay. Step two. Work the gift. Work the gift. So be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may lay something on your heart to say or ask. And it could be along the lines of, like, do you like to skateboard? Do you like something specific? Do, you, do Maybe they play basketball and God's, like, get, showing you a basketball in, their, in your head and you have no clue, like, what that, how that connects. So, um, or, like, random things. Like, have you thought of becoming a doctor? And you're like, well, me? Like. Yeah, actually, like I was just thinking about it last week. I had this moment. I'll give you an example of this. I was in New Jersey. We were pumping gas. There was f five girls in the car. I was the fifth one. The guy was, he, it was a full service gas station. The guy was pumping the gas over here. I was in the farthest w like side of the car, right? He's pumping the gas. And he, I see this guy, chiseled jaw, like looks like a model. And I look to him, I like pulled, we pulled down the window. I'm like, I need to talk to this guy. And I'm like screaming through the window as he's pumping gas. Hey, have you ever thought of becoming an actor? And he goes, um, that's the third time someone's told me that in the last two weeks. So you never know what God is, is caught. Like he's pumping gas. Like why are you up not in your purpose? Go act, go model, use the gifts that God has given you. So sometimes God will say the simplest things. You just have to trust that if you have to believe in yourself, believe in the God in you, believe that God is speaking through you, and be like, oh my gosh, I hear this weird, this weird word, the weirdest one that's ever happened. Maybe one time I'll come back and we'll play some prophetic games. But we were in this room they were, we, with the ministry team that I was running with um, in doing in-city missions and we played this game we had to close our eyes and we shared utensils and then you close your eyes and if you saw something for the fork he would just say it and so for me this is the first round of this not a game it's really like an activation and I see ostrich I'm like ostrich this is so random ostrich and then my other friend says get your head out of the sand 
So we start, we were, we were specifically talking to one person, but I had one word and she had the continuation of it. So as you guys go out, as you're going in twos and threes, maybe God will give you something, but it's an incomplete picture. And then the other person, as you say it, it will bring clarity to the other person to speak to them. Do you get it? That makes sense? Okay. Step number two, continuation, because <laughs> I want to teach you what word of knowledge is. Do you guys know about the gifts? Is the gifts? Word of knowledge, prophecy, healing. What else is there? Tongues, interpretation of tongues, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, non-encouragement, um, prophecy. Did I say prophecy already? There's nine, right? Am I on? Nine? I didn't get the scripture reference, but the word of knowledge is one of them. A word of knowledge is the supernatural ability to know a truth about a person, a situation, or an occurrence that you wouldn't have known without God revealing it to you. You can stir that gift. One of the ways that you could do that is to ask God about yourself. The quickest way to stir the, the gift of, of word of knowledge is be like, God, what do you think about me? So you start to hear. You open your mind and your spiritual ears to hear. And then when you're ready to go out to, to speak to people, then you're going to be like, God. And even you can be out. Like, I want you to just apply this, not just one moment, not just for next week, but every time you walk out of your house and every time you wake up. Because the moment that you wake up, ministry starts. The moment that you wake up. We have access to thousands of people. If we combined all the people we're connected with, thousands. And it's, if it's not thousands, there's hundreds of people, maybe tens, twenties, thirties, fifties of people that are in your circle that they may not say anything, but they're watching you. So think about it when you use your spheres of influence to, to talk, to talk. So anyways, this is a word of knowledge. Be aware of, the, of hearing God as you're talking to a person. The Holy Spirit may reveal something to you. Be bold and share it. It may be an open door for them to be receptive of what God wants to do in their lives. So that may come up if you get a word and you say, maybe it's a word of encouragement. Maybe it's something specific. You can be like, hey, can I, can I share what God showed me about you? And then at that point, they're like, wait, what did God show you about me? Okay, yeah, sure. You want, they get curious. Um, I could tell you a story that was similar. It actually happened today, two years ago. I, w I needed a new phone. I walked into the Apple store, and it was full. I mean, what, what's the day again? Black Friday? Black Friday. Imagine the Apple store on Black Friday before COVID, okay? And this guy approaches me. I had seen him at the Apple store before. I knew that he worked there. He approaches me and start talking. I was like, hey, like, do you... Uh, I don't even know. I start, God starts speaking to me about him. It's like, hey, do you have a sister? He's like, yeah. How do you know that? Oh, um, yeah, just I feel like God's like showing me things about you. Like you really have a great relationship with your mom. Like you really appreciate the women in your family. Did you research me? How did you know that? Um, yeah, wh what does your dad do for work? You don't, you, your relationship with your dad is kind of strained, right? He's like, yeah. Like, what does your dad do for work? He goes to one of the computers and types because he feels like he can't say it out loud. And his dad worked for, like, the CIA equivalent of Canada. And he's like, yeah, he was, like, on missions most of my life on to break down these, I don't know, crimes or whatever people were doing. And he's like, yeah, I just, he wasn't really around. I'm like, you, you really want to change that. Like, you just... You have such a pure heart. And he's like, honestly, like, uh, are you sure you didn't research me? I'm like, honestly, I don't even know your name. So <laughs> I don't know. And so I say that to say I walked out of the store and I was like, so what do you think about God? And he's like, I'm like, he's like, I I'm a Muslim. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. I'm like, God's trying to get your attention. And I walked out of the store. We stayed connected on Instagram. Two years later, something's glitching with my phone. I had to go back to the Apple store. This was like two weeks ago. I, I booked the appointment. It was supposed to be at 10 a.m. The appointment somehow gets canceled. It, 
or 10.45, I get pushed to 11. I'm like, okay, cool. I get to the appointment, and I see him pull up to the table like, <sighs> and I'm like, is that? I'm like, hi, friend. He's like, oh, my gosh, Josie. He's like, man, I just got here. I'm late. Think about it. My appointment got canceled at 10.45. I'm like, are you helping me? He's like, yeah, I guess. What's going on? I was like, what, God? What, God? Okay. So at this point, I'm like, you have this whole appointment for me. You have this divine appointment that you've set. I'm thinking I'm here to get a new phone, but really it's not. And I tell him what's going on. He's like, no, you know, Josie, like, we can't, we don't give out phones like that at the Apple store. You have to call in. If you call in, they'll throw a phone at you. They had already told me, whatever. He's like, I'll do some diagnostic tests, whatever. He asked me a few questions. Um... And he, he asked me if I, like, yeah, about my life. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. God gave me this dream. And then it opened up this whole new thing. And he's like, a dream? You know, that's why I was late this morning because I had a, this dream. I was like, hmm, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. So I get curious. I start st- telling me about his dream. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, he walks away. This diagnostic thing is still operating on my phone. And I say, God, what does this mean? What does this dream mean? Like, give me revelation. What do you want to say to him right now? So he comes back to the table. The dream was about him, his friend, like, stealing from a bank and then giving him, like, a stack of cash or something like that. And I was like, are you desiring something? It's like, what does that have to do with my with my dream I'm like is there something you desire strongly because I know that that doesn't fit your character because your character is not to do to steal he's like no not really I'm like don't second guess yourself don't lower your morals for somebody else don't change who you are for the people around you even though they may be doing one thing you're not that close to them like stay be integral uh, into who you are and he turns to me, he's like, that's a good word, Josie. I'll, I'll, uh, you always got some good word. I say all of that to say, two years. Did I lead him to Jesus? No. Did I plant some seeds, though? Yes. Did God water some seeds in that moment? Yes. Do I know what's going to happen after that? I don't know. But don't go into next week being like, oh, everyone's going to be healed and say, yes, it's great. Have that perspective, but Pastor Kerry was preaching about Todd White a few weeks ago. And if you know anything about his story, he prayed for like 166 people or something like that before he saw a healing in front of his eyes. So don't get discouraged. Just know that the Holy Spirit is inside of you and that, like, he's leading you. He's leading you. I believe it. All right. The last step, there's two more steps, but this last practical step is ask if they want like pray for them ask if they want or need prayer for anything so pray about what God showed you you can you can pray about what God showed you earlier or ask them if they need prayer for anything specific example is there anything I can pray for you today or can I pray for you about your your mom or whatever they said to you earlier in the conversation I'd be like yeah that that actually be really nice So you never know, like, what your heart, like, how God can use your mouth to really speak into a situation and bring life to to a situation. Does that make sense? It's super practical. We don't have to make evangelism this thing that's so difficult. You can just be in the grocery store. Just be in the grocery store. And and, And just be like, That's another way, just God, I just acknowledge your presence. Why? Because when we acknowledge his presence, he directs our our steps. God, I just acknowledge you. I'm going to the grocery store, but if there's anyone you want me to talk to, let me know. Simple. We don't need to wait for a moment. We we are the conduits. We create the moment because God is in us. Amen? So the bonus is connect with them. If you feel led to connect with them in some way, whether it's through social media, maybe it's through your number, maybe it's through email. If you feel led to share with, share with them and connect them maybe to a sermon that relates to something that they're going through. It could be from your church or it could be something that like you watch. It could be like even a sermon snippet. Be like, 
oh, you're struggling with that? Yeah, like, I really want to send you an encouraging video. Can, can I get your social media? And then you never know. Like, you, you open a door to communication that might lead you to actually, like, walking with them in life, right? So, okay, let's, let's make it practical. I, t- I taught you all this stuff. I want to make it practical. <laughs> We're going to do it live right here, applicable, okay? I'm going to give you a scenario. I'm going to call two people up. And you have to have a conversation with a stranger. I hope at this point you kind of know each other. But if you don't, it's okay. It's a perfect, it's a perfect opportunity. I'm going to call one of the most extroverted people probably in the room. Marley, come up here because I know you, you're going to interact. <laughs> All right. Marley, you, you, you pick someone in the room that you don't know well. Okay, so come stand right here. The scenario is you, uh, you're you the one that's going to do the talking. You can be over there. Pretend you're picking apple. Stop right there. You're, you're, you're choosing the best apple in the grocery store, okay? This is a scenario. You don't know him, and you feel that God gave you a word about him playing basketball, okay? All right? And action. <coughs> Oh, sir, O'Brien. I know you're dreading this. It's okay. 
<laughs> He's like, this crazy girl's calling me out too much. <laughs> Hello, you're wearing my team. I am Italian, amen. But I'm a painter, amen. So, so, listen to me. Who wants to do the talking? Okay. <laughs> He's like, come on, the, the women are the bold ones today, okay? Amen. The dog agrees. All right, Liliana. Liliana. So, what, give, someone give me an example. What should be the scenario here? Where are you guys? You guys want shot, the shots on the dominoes, right? On the bus. On the bus. On the bus. Mm-hmm. On the bus. Okay, so he's sitting on the bus. Grab a chair. You're sitting by yourself. You listen to your music. What do you want to be listening to? Okay, is this a possible? Okay. You listen to the. Okay, I love that. He's like. Oh my God. By the way, you listen to some elevation worship, so he knows the Lord. You can hear it a little bit. Blast through his speakers. No, he's one of those people on the TTC that he's there, like, loud. It's playing from his phone, and you hear, um, what's the elevation song? You know these songs? Oh, now. Okay, that's happening. And you're like, oh my gosh, I just, I just, get, I got a word, and now I need to, I need to, I feel like I need to talk to him. Do you need more direction? Um, the word is that you just feel him, God calling him into ministry. Okay, that's, 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 that's good. All right, so ready? One, two, three, action. Hey, I heard your music. It's awesome. Yeah. clear on how to approach people you can be anywhere and God could speak to you so 
take those take those steps. I just want to go through just a few more things just really, really quickly. The next slide says the goal is to make disciples. The goal is not to have a 500 member church. The goal is to really, truly impact people with with the gospel. Right. So. Matthew 28, 19 to 20 says, Now wherever you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you, and never forget that I'm with you every day, even to the completion of this age. If someone didn't stop their day to talk to me and to disciple me, at the time I didn't know that that's what he was doing, he would call me every week, a few times a week. Hey, Josie, how you doing? Can I pray for you? Not just one time. I'm talking about for six months. And it was the first time I had ever been, like, a guy spoke to me with no intentions. So I'm not saying that it's impossible to have those relationships because I'm a product of it. But you have to be very level-minded and know, like, that what this is. Like, I, you're not missionary dating. <laughs> Have you heard that term before? You're not, you're not trying to go out there and, and save her for you. Like, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I'm a, I'm a product of it. He'd call me every, every few days. Hey, Josie, are you okay? Hey, Josie, what can I pray for you for? Josie, do you want to read the Bible? Yeah, I did, actually. I was really hungry for the word. And then I had a dream. I don't know if uh, Pastor Carrie shared it with you, but there's a testimony on my Instagram of how I came to the Lord. And I, I had a dream, December 31st, 2010, and in the dream, he was like, there's so much was happening, and I woke up from this dream. I was pregnant in the dream, never been pregnant a day in my life. I was like, what is going on? It felt so real. So I woke up from this dream, and I realized, well, not, Matthew called me four days later, and he said to me, how you doing? Happy New Year, January 4th. I'm like, I'm good. I felt like I was going to cry. I didn't know why. Why am I crying? He's just calling me, checking up on me. And he, I was like, I had this dream. I don't know what's going on. He's like, can I ask you a question, Josie? He's like, Would you, if, you, if you were to die, to, no, he said, do you believe in God? And I answered similar to O'Brien. I was like, well, kind of, I guess. I was raised Catholic my whole life, I guess. <laughs> I'm spiritual. Well, I didn't say that, but you know what I mean. And he goes, okay, let me ask you a different question. If I, you were to die tonight, would you want to be with God? And I was like, yeah. So we prayed the prayer. And halfway through this prayer, I realized that the dream that I had four days before was a continuation of a video that I had watched like four years before in the exact same spot. How does that happen? So all these thoughts were going through my head like, God, like, there's no coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences. There's, there's a reason for this moment. So... That's, that's how I came to the Lord. He led me to the Lord that day. And, yeah, like, it's disciples, to create disciples is to really, like, walk someone through. So I just want to teach you some steps on discipleship past just talking to the person. The first step is leading the one. So pursuing the one. I mean, I didn't open my, my notes. But Jesus said he left the 99 for the one, Right? He left the crowd for the one, so that's why it's called pursuing the one. What do you think? If someone had a hundred sheep, oh, that is the scripture right there. If someone had a hundred sheep and one of them wandered off, wouldn't he leave the 99 on the hillside and go to and search for the one that wandered off? Yeah, he would. So pursuing the one is the steps that we talked about before. Talking to them, engaging that conversation, starting Maybe it's a, it could be a person that's in your life. It could be your family member. It could be someone, a stranger, but it's, it's the beginning, right? It's pursuing the one. The next one is inviting the one. Go, therefore, and make disciples. We read the scripture again. Invite them to be a part of your life. You know, um, Na um, Naomi didn't know makeup. And sorry, what, what was your name again? Brianna and what? Brooke? Cool. Maybe you can be like, hey, you guys want to come over? We can just, like, chill one day and, like, I can show you my makeup. Like, invite them really genuinely in your world. Because discipleship doesn't happen if you don't have connection. When you look at the disciples, what did they do with Jesus? 
broke bread, traveled together, ate to, they ate a lot in the Bible. <laughs> like, are we opening up our homes to the people that we're, we want to know, we want them to know Jesus? I heard something the other day. Um, there were some people from the Billy Graham Association of Canada. If you don't know Billy Graham, you should really look him up. Amazing evangelist. Millions of people led to the Lord. So these people work there. And they said, I forgot what they said. It just, dist- I got distracted. What in the world? Um, it'll come back to me. Oh, we were talking about, they were talking about retreats. They're like, aren't retreats amazing? Have you guys ever been on a retreat of some sort? retreats or like a, a weekend getaway and, and and he was like what what makes those retreats memorable you're okay sure they're peaceful, they're peaceful and relaxing everything else and focus you're also breaking bread together you're sharing rooms together you're actually operating like the disciples did But then we live these moments of retreat, but then the rest of our lives, we forget that these people even exist. I'm tired of retreat moments. Like the other day, I went to Pastor Carrie's house, and we were there for five hours. The first time I remember meeting this this lady, and I'm like, ding dong, I have Timbits for you. (laughs) Like, let's, let's talk. That to me is like it's the original. It's the is the yeah, like let's let's like swarm Pastor Carrie's house. Worship night at Pastor Carrie's house. Coming soon. <laughs> so invite people into your world. The next one is bringing the one. So this scripture says whoever forces you to go a mile or if you walk a mile with someone, go with him too. In this case, it's it's the example of, "Hey, come bring them." Oh, they don't have a ride? Drive them to to a youth night. Bring them out with you. Oh, you can't get around? Like, let's be kingdom. I'll go out of your, my way for you because I, you're valuable. Because they're valuable to the king, you know? So I won't bore you with, the re- with a, a whole bunch of stuff. But this is one more. Walking with the one. If you abide in my word and you're truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, they answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. But how is it that you say you you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave doesn't remain in the house forever. The son remains in the house forever. So if the son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. And if you're a son and a daughter of God, you bring freedom wherever you go. So as you invite them into your house, as you invite them, you bring them into your life, then they, they're going to be like, you know what? I just, Marley, I just see you're always happy. Like, I don't get it. You're going through so much, but, like, you're so peaceful. I don't, why? People will start to question. People that have watched me on, on social media sometimes message me, and they're like, hey, I give my life to the Lord. I don't even know you, but praise God. Thank you for being an example. So you never know who you're inspiring. So. That's it. The last slide says, let's go and make disciples. So thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Carrie. You you have been a true blessing. It's been an honor to just share what God has has deposited and, and shared with me. So you, if you don't know yet, if this is your first time here today, you have an amazing woman of God who's on fire and truly loves him authentically. And, and she loves you so much that she would stop everything to be like, hey, I have something. God wants to show you another side of his, of his shimmer, you know. So don't take advantage of it. It's not normal. So I, I just, can I pray for you guys? Let me just pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for rain. God, I thank you for every single person in this room. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit fire will hit them, Lord God, from the inside, that revival will start one by one. God, I pray that they would just ignite somebody else, even just one person, to love you so much. 
God, I pray that you allow them to jump in your river of worship every day alone. And God, I pray that you just draw, even just draw. If it's hard for them to go out, God, I pray that you draw people, that you make them lights, that people will just be so drawn to your spirit inside of them. Lord, I thank you that you have birthed them, these sons and daughters, for such a time as this, God, to shake this city. It's not called Rain Toronto for a reason. God, I pray that you, e you would even, like, rain your, your latter rain on this house. God, I pray that you would bless every pastor, every leader, every person that has been plowing, and that you would show them that their fruit is coming and the harvest is coming and that you would do it through them. In Jesus' name, amen.